problematic. I would like an Aurelia ban. I don't really want to see Aurelia in my games. I'm glad Yumi has been added to the rotation. Everyone has collectively agreed. No, we're not, we're not really going to let that through anymore. I wonder if at any point in the tournament we're going to see the Whoa. Yumi left open and maybe get like Soraka, you know, or Sona's response. But why would you risk it in group stage? And especially Fnatic, they play it safe. Aurelia is still open, but they do ban Maples. Zoe, this which I get. This is what I was concerned about because you left, you, you've banned Lucian here as PSG. They're not going to ban the MF counterwise. So you have a really strong first pick here. Yeah, you're going to give up the Lee Sin, but they haven't, uh, you know, necessarily relied on that in the past. It was played once already in the group stage, but now you're lacking in terms of strong early picks on the AD carry roll for Bean. See if that ends up being something they pick up much later. They're going to have to draft very differently, though, around this MF. <laughs> Niski's going to pick it up. The Trindamir going to be taken away from Maple. Considering now the uh, the Kaiser for the AD carry position, this has been very popular. P picked into the Misfortune, repositioning, burst damage, things like that. You can understand why. We haven't seen it necessarily represented statistically being able to take her down, but that was mainly in play-ins in uh, a different scenario there. Uh, it don't mind this as well. Uh, it is uh, slowly becoming the main neutralizer into MF lanes, the Jin, because you don't really have to interact with her at all. You can yeah. somewhat match the shove that she tries to put out. Her poke is not as dangerous as you can mostly deal with that from a range where it's not going to bother you too much. And we've already seen how well teams have been able to play around those curtain calls. Yeah, and also Jin is just a straight up upgrade uh, to Misfortune. Hers only bounces once. His bounces <laughs> a bunch of times. It's four. Yeah, of course it's four. Yeah, it's it's, it's it, Jin. It's ludicrous. So many extra bounces. So obviously it's just a much better champion. There's a lot of threat. Uh, Depending on what support they end up picking up here, Leona is still available um, to try to all-in on top of this gen early. He's got a lot of range, of course, but you make one missed up, you have one error, and it's very difficult to kill him. Another strong engage champion, one of Maple's best, oh. one of the best champions you can play or watch Maple play here in Worlds. It's going to be the Silas. So much potential for him to carry, and he really has been, without Doggo here, I think the strongest player for PSG, their iconic leader in terms of the games we've seen played for them so far. And now the frustration just doubled, because now there's Undying Rage on both sides yes. of the map. And it's absolutely not what you, I mean, we all we all know the Silas is picked into Alistair, you know, he picks up that unbreakable will and you're like, oh my goodness, it's a mid lane, it does so much damage and is impossible to kill. It's the same thing, uh, guys, it's just, that's a, that's a roughie. Kennen gonna be locked away here for Adam though, as uh, the team fighting possibilities for Fnatic are extended, I like this. I like Yamato's shirt. So Me too. As, uh, it's it's a always pepper good. as ever. Yeah, I mean, he always does, but I feel like this one in particular deserves a call out. And now you have the opportunity to ban away a couple of um, counter picks if you want to for the top side. But I think one of the beauties of the cannon is that it is kind of hard to really counter him. Yeah. We've seen Zhao who do it, but I don't expect Hanabi to pick up the Syndra mid or the Syndra top rider out of nowhere. Um, so I think that that is a very safe pick that you can still provide yourself with a lot of opportunity to look for maybe a support counter pick. And um, when we talk about Fnatic, you're always going to have to talk about Whippo and Haley. They are the ones that are able to really, when Fnatic looks good, is off the back of them finding plays across the map on snowballing, playing this high octane level of gameplay. And I do got to say, with what PSG have drafted so far, I feel like we should know relatively early in this game what the outcome is going to be. Because if you fall behind with this PSG comp, you're in deep trouble. But if you fall behind as Fnatic, it doesn't bode well for the playstyle. No, I, I do agree. And what I was going back to earlier with that Leona discussion, they chose the Silas instead, is that you do have a lot of power with this Misfortune early on against the Jin with, with Leona, but you also had a lot of power with the Amubo. I really love these support bands coming through here on the side of Fnatic because you are going to take away a lot of that power. If that lane gets out of control early with this comp that is so good at skirmishing with the Silas, with the Lee Sin already, you're really going to have a hard time coming back into the game. So really smart bands here. The counter pick potential here on this cannon, as you mentioned, there's not a bunch of really hard counters, but the Jace is still available here for Hanabi. That's where I'm kind of looking for the next step here for PSG. Interesting Thresh being looked at for Hillasang, of course, one of his favorites, but not necessarily the champion that you think of uh, to be paired with the Jin. but with so many supports being banned away, of course, now we've got Yumi, Leona, Amumu, and the Rakan. Um, just, you know, a bit thinner as far as that champion pool is concerned, and they are going to lock it away, and so now, 
a possible Aurelia here if you wanted to. Or also, Hanabi yeah. if you'd like to. But uh, he really likes Gangplank and always has. And he's going to lock that one away. Circles to be put down onto the ground for both of our top laners. And this means that the team fighting from PSG just got even scarier. And also, what were they doing? They were using all of those teleports in their last match against Hanwha to help with their macro play. Do you know what Gangplank does? He helps with your macro play as Kai Wing. Thinking about Brad for the bottom lane, but it's going to be it's, it's too fun. I know. <laughs> it's too fun, Atlas. I actually think that um, it would have been really good. Like, yeah. if you look at the, the amount of uh, damage that they can layer on top of it, a Mathil, uh, Silas, if he steals something like the Cannon Ultimate or a Curtain Call, can also follow up on that. The Brom, though, I think into Fnatic specifically, huge fan of. And Fnatic. They see the Brom, they see the Gangplank, two champions that are going to be very happy when you try and go hard engage on them, right? When you try to play melee, the Fnatic will remain Fnatic. The Jarvan gets locked in, and if they don't find early leads with this comp, I think it's going to be a really, really tough time yeah. for them. And they're already 0-2. We've seen Adam talk about like the atmosphere in the team, and understandably, considering their circumstances, it's rough. Yeah. It, it's also a team comp where if they don't get ahead, it's, it's not great, but it's falling behind where things can get tragic. And Fnatic has been, so far in the two games they played, all about Whippo's jungle passing. How aggressive can they be early? How much of a tempo advantage can they, can they get? And, you know, we did see that Bard pick highlight just there for a second. It's one of Kai Wing's favorite uh, champions to play. But the Bard is just so strong into this type of engage that we're seeing from Fnatic. Just kind of play it safer. You've got that Gangplank later on to scale up super well. You've already got a really nice tempo comp with the Lee Sin and that Silas. So if you could just stave off that early pressure from Fnatic and go even in the mid game, I think you feel really great right now as PSG talent. Yep, well, fist bumps have gone out and now it is time to hop onto the Rift for the fourth game of the day. Don't worry, guys, there are another four right after this one, including our Mercedes game to watch in T1 versus 100 Thieves, but that is at the very end and now it's time to see whether PSG or Fnatic are going to come out on top. And look, I'll forgive the Javan. I, I think a lot of people have been really down on the Javan. I don't know whether we're getting ahead of ourselves because that's what, you know, the first few days of groups at Worlds that's is what you about. Do. That's what you're supposed yeah, to that's, do. Yeah, that's the general standard. We've been standard. nailing it. We've been nailing it. Um, we've been saying things like the Javan's just terrible, which he's obviously not because otherwise he's best teams in the world would not be picking He's him, four right? and six, not too bad, not too bad. But I think I think the Javan sort of only works if you're going to hard camp Hanabi, right? Because everybody else can find ways out of a Cataclysm, outside of Unified, but maybe yeah. he just stands it's his ground and hey, kills Hey, if you Cataclysm people. Unified, like, something has gone horribly wrong. No, I mean, <laughs> honestly, like, I, I, I do think that when it comes to, uh, and we've seen Jarvan's being picked into compositions that have, like, four mobile characters. And in this case, I think you have, like, two great targets, and then in some scenarios, if his cooldowns are down, maybe you can go for Maple, maybe you can go for Kyrowing if the uh, stand behind Brom have already been used. Um, but we talk about Fnatic, right? This is a really important win for them. They're 0-2. Yeah. Uh, spirits aren't that high. Uh, after the last two losses, I imagine that EU is also really looking forward to picking up a win. But then also, let's take a look at PSG because a win here would put them to second in this group. And this is a group where we've seen a lot of volatility. Outside of RNG, who just look like the best yeah. um, by far. Uh, Hanwha Life has been very up and down, which shouldn't surprise anyone. <laughs> uh, no. But it's something that going into a week number two can kind of scare you. And a win here for PSG would kind of solidify them as the powerhouse that they also were at MSI. Yeah, it's really, for, for certain players on Fnatic 2, you got to feel for them. Like, Blippo's put such a great effort into setting up so many of the early games here for Fnatic. One of the star players, big personality over in the LEC. Adam, this is supposed to be his big break, right? This is supposed to be his moment. One of the best top laners in Europe. And, you know, he's playing with a bit of a handicap. And even for Bean, right? It, you don't want to re be remembered in this group stage as a stand-in. You don't want to be remembered as the guy who played because the upset couldn't. You want to actually have a fantastic performance. And this is not over. They're only 0-2. This is where you could start to make a big comeback in this group. And that's where momentum can massively swing in terms of your emotions, right, and your morale. Yeah. No, I agree. I think Bean as well was actually quite good yesterday. I'll Absolutely. Agree. Yeah. Oh, that I, double? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Quite liked it. Laning phase was strong, and now they're going to get the push. Of course, didn't help Leash or anything like that, so are going to be able to get to lane first and grab some added control. That's going to work out. Melee versus melee feels pretty good as a Trindomir. Not something that you're used to necessarily, as mid lane Trindomir, just in general. 
But of course, ah. both of these champions are basically going to be as frustrating as each other as the game goes on. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Just trying to move. If they're ranged, yeah, just sustain it off. If they're like, melee, just crit. Oh my god, I just realized. It's like it's the return of Voivoy. It's like the, the AP Trindamir is back, but in the form <laughs> of Silas. I love it. That's a I don't know whether it was Voivoy that actually came up with it, but I watched a video <laughs> of him talking about the AP uh, Trindamir back in the day, and that was where I got it. So I, I like to give it to him. Remember him. how many... Oh, never mind. Okay. No, they're fine. Remember how many champions that weren't supposed to be AP, but were AP without, without AP Yeah, we're talking about Yi. AP I Yee. was going to say Yi. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember Corn Salad um, and Faker Mid. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was a fun time back then. Was it fun? No. It was not Absolutely good for solo wasn't. queue players on uh, the Korean server during that time, I can tell you that. It wasn't good for... It's like... It's like <laughs> all of the pentakills from that that period of Yi are just going to be the weirdest thing for someone that didn't watch League of Legends looking at like a list of like the pentakills because those ones happen in like a second as I'm going to have to hold the thought for a moment. Flake comes back here, Hilly. Going to be able to land the hook as well. Throws out the lantern, but Kai Wing going to stand beside Unified, gets himself out of the way. The dancing grenade takes a very, very long time. Ignored gravity completely getting towards the MF, but going to be able to walk this one out. And Whippo just going to be stealing away this Krug camp. That's really nice timing, actually. Uh, gets him here for free, although has he overstaged, should be able to get out of here. Ooh, so you're going to connect, though. Flags, drags, gets himself out, but River, he's got a safeguard, but there is also a lantern here as well. Hilly demonstrating just how practiced he is on the Thresh. Nice little play there from Fnatic, using uh, the fact that Whippo is on the bot side as well as the priority that being able have been uh, able to uh, kind of find early on in that lane and have been uh, basically shoving Unified and Cowing in continuously. And it, if we're at Law Park, this was bound <laughs> to happen eventually. How do we get to four games without a pause? I know. This it's is shocking. absolutely ludicrous. Yeah, it's a bit of a rarity here for us these uh, these days, but mm -hmm. to not have one. Yeah, it's a bit of a rarity to be pauseless. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> it's getting late. But uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. But anyway, uh, yeah, I like the play there from Whippo. It's a fairly even game here, and the tension is really high because we've talked a lot about. Fnatic and where their mental is at right now. You know, they're 0-2 in the group. They're, they're not playing under ideal conditions, obviously. That's the big storyline for Fnatic. Um, Looks like Bwipo's feeling himself, though. Yeah, he's certainly uh, put on a bit of a smile after the pause. PSG, on the other hand, you know, again, tough road here through the play-ins, and they're 1-1, one and, one, and a team that had high expectations after MSI, where they really, really outdid what people thought they were going to be able to do, and it turned out Doggo being the sub. In a similar scenario right to Fnatic's current situation ended up being a huge boon for them right he ended up helping carry them through MSI and you could really feel um that Unified is starting to pick up the pieces here but he hasn't quite reached Doggo's level just yet but a it's win so here. weird t saying that though yeah. Yeah, as well because Doggo was a sub and he's like now Unified the mainstay on yeah. the team is trying to catch up to the sub that we saw at MSI and, that's and, not fair and Doggo also they didn't make it to the, the main group at yeah. PSG of course yeah. as, as the number one seed for uh, for the PC but yeah no, we're actually fine, and I have been, uh, you shouldn't, I, I wouldn't say surprised because it's something that Maple has done so much over the years, but it's just a, a beauty to see how quick this team is able to, like, find a small mid-game, or what feels rather like a small mid-game opening, and then sequence, like, free four plays off of the back of that, get a kill, get a collapse, then turn it into a Drake, turn it into Division Control, and turn it into the pressure on Baron. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Hanabi as well, actually gonna eat some oranges, has to get away from Adam here. Does have a decent CS advantage to the tune of about 10 right now. But this is, of course, a very, very comfortable pick for Hanabi. I feel like as long as I've been watching Hanabi play, every single tournament he's in, he plays at least a few games of Gangplank, unless it's uh, banned away. Certainly extreme comfort here for him. Let's teleport back to lane. Maple is going to have a fair bit of company here, potentially, as we can see that top brush is very dark, but PSG know what's going on it's three versus three right now as the chains come in maple knows exactly what he wants here good knock up from whippo though is going to force the disengage from psg no first blood yet yeah you know maple is going to hit six and is going to be able to have this undying rage stolen away so really really a lot of opportunity here to dive deep as psg in this exchange you also are able to pick up hillsong's flash in this because he was a little bit overextended so massive trades here in favor of psg Niski also forced to use his Ghost just to make sure that he doesn't die. He wasn't 5 when that skirmish started, only hit it midway through. And uh, one of the cool things about a Trinimber ultimate is like, 
the amount of sustain that the champion has also enables him going low but then sustaining back up quickly. But so does Silas with Kingslayer, right? Like, it, it, the more you think about it, the more it's how sick really this Silas counter pick is into something like a Trindamir. But now they go, um, they are able to use the knowledge of where PSG was. That play that didn't really work out for either of them, but they found the shove afterwards. They're able to take control of the Dragon Pit and getting an early Drake, especially after having seen two games today that were basically decided by which team stra uh, um, stacked, thank yes, you, yes. three Dragons first. Uh, I think that is already going to give you a little bit of a better feeling. And Whipple has been super diligent about his counter jungling um, and has been enabled by Healy. And that's how we love to see Fnatic. Oh, Whipple, a, man. A Sonic Wave secure. Whipple is very interesting is move. Very quietly been one of the best junglers of worlds, I think. And that's it says a lot, I think, coming from a team that's 0 2. His ability to punish enemy junglers, counter jungle, steal camps away has just been so fantastic. He really pushes the limits of what's possible as a jungler. He's very often 10 CS or more ahead of his opponents in the early game. It's transitioning to the late game for Fnatic where things have started to fall apart. But as you mentioned, Chronicler having that early Drake, really nice to have. One of the best abilities you have in the game is going to be that cannon ultimate when you go towards that first Rift Herald fight, especially if you control vision. And hey, we already got the pulse. And he might be setting up for a Cloud Soul as coming goes in. Yeah, River looking to try and get himself here. There's the exhaust onto Hillisung, down to 200. The Q's going to connect. Fantastic play, though, from Hilly. Gets himself out and looks to avoid the Winter's Bite, but Bean's going to pick that one up for his support. Oh, man, this guy's pretty good at threat. The timing here on this Rift Herald, there was a window where you could see some warding there from Adam. It was deep and had better vision control. Flippo is going to come over the wall here, but look at the group up now. The scary thing is, Hijack's coming off a cooldown here for Maple very soon. This is definitely a winnable fight here for PSG if they can rotate in, but they're very slow on this. Yes, yeah, so much vision available, but they're not really going to uh, do anything about it. Is the eye is just going to be picked up. Um, cannon Barrage could have been used. I yeah. mean, we've seen Cannon Barrages steal things in that pit before, especially as LCK commentators. Certainly. There, I mean, there are a lot of ways they could have come in a lot faster there. Yeah, just uh, didn't quite have enough people in position, and now Kyling's forced to flash, get himself out of the way. Whipo's going to get first blooded, though. Sanabi flashes forward with his flaming sword. Now Maple with an opportunity. He's got his own slicing maelstrom and will clean up Fnatic. Better late than never here for PSG. You don't need to fight. You got the Herald. You did the thing that you came there to do. You don't have to stay. And this is something that we've seen Fnatic do so often. We're like, I love that play, right? You read the map very well. You're able to pick up a Herald for free on Vision. You get away with Nerd, and then you walk up to the police. And you're like, I, guys, I did it. Like, <laughs> yeah, was... like, put me in jail. And, and, and then the frustrating thing with this is I think if you just back off there, you're able to then take the Herald, turn it into gold lead on one of your characters, and then snowball the map pretty consistently well, from there. But instead, look at how they it starts. Go all in. Look at how it starts. Whipple's just trying to get a bigger lead in the jungle. And if you could actually get over the wall there on top of Maple, maybe you can make a play. But this is just a bridge too far, Fnatic, because you're walking into a choke point here. Yes, you do have the cannon. So it feels like if you see an engage from PSG on top of your carries here, maybe you can get that slicing maelstrom off. But the slicing maelstrom is stolen. You don't have positional advantage there. You're walking right into a trap. Arms behind your back, even. It was just not the place you wanted to be as Fnatic. Extreme greed, and what was a fantastic start is now a huge lead for PSG. Yeah, and when the Rift Herald comes down, it should equalize this gold just a little bit, but the advantage that uh, you had for yourself, like Fnatic, that was that was beautifully done at the beginning. Oi, difficult. And, and this is something that has categorized PSG so much. Like, you cannot disrespect this team. Like, they are really, really good. Mechanically, they will identify situations like this. River's like, he's dead. Like, I don't know what he's doing here, but like, he's dead on my screen. I'm going all in. They blow him up immediately. And it's exactly that type of kind of a decisiveness that makes going for aggressive plays like that without proper control of the enemy jungle such a big risk, especially against a team that play really well and I wonder whether they thought Unified back because what happened there is Unified walked up relatively far then started channeling his back but then PSG saw Fnatic they keep going and then actually made his way to the fight and we saw how it ended. Well, well now River looking for an opportunity there is the Rift Herald thrown down. Q's going to connect onto it though we'll see whether they can actually 
uh, poke Shelly's eye as she's no. not actually starting up the charge yet. That Q not going to work out. And then uh, River just going to smite it. Uh, that was a whoopsie. And now any advantage that you were supposed to get from the Rift Herald is non-existent. I don't like it. I get so excited for Fnatic early games this tournament. I get so excited. Yeah, well, the door is going to be shown to Fnatic now as both of them get knocked up with the Glacial Fissure. Kyrie down very low as now Niski gets into the Cataclysm alongside Whippo. He's going to get that work done, but it's a one for one as Whippo's already been taken down. Maple still with the Undying Rage available. Bean not going to be able to get any further forward. He does, of course, have a lot of long range abilities. As meanwhile, on the top side, picture in picture, there is a lot of work being done by Hanabi. As Adam going to be forced back home yet again. We'll have Teleport if he wants to get back, but this is going to be the Drake taken away by Pierce. The scary part about taking fights like this as Fnatic in these skirmishes is that Maple gets to press R second uh, over Reniski in every fight, in every scenario. So if you do go too far, if you do go too deep trying to look for these kills, there's no way out. There is a very easy punish available for PSG as long as Maple is nearby. So it's just so terrifying to commit. Huh? Lantern block! Oh no, it's been one. He's just able to walk out, but it was well blocked. <laughs> yeah, I was scared for a second. <laughs> uh, well, now Maple's Still gonna come over. through. Yeah, exactly right. Once again, extended exchanges. It's another concussive blows to come through to get that stun. Is now Niski. He's got his undying rage as well as Maple. He's gonna proc his. That's the killing spree for the Silas. As, uh, yeah, he unfortunately doesn't have the ability to press Q and get all of his health back afterwards, so he's just gonna die to minions. That wasn't great from Maple, and Niski's gonna be able to walk his way out. He pressed R first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, guess too many I think the R is spelled A-H-H-H-H-H, -H 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 -H, unfortunately, in this, <laughs> yeah. in this case. I guess you'll take it. Uh, Niski getting fat is one of the ways that, as Fnatic, you're clinging on to this mm. game. And, like, clinging on is a bit dramatic. They're 1k gold behind. They have a composition that can still fight. But we can't get this lead extend, right? And it's not like the PSG side doesn't snowball well. Um, and now Niski able to pick up both his guild force and also has the little tempo. So he's going to put out an insane amount of damage. Yeah, well, they're just going to dive straight underneath this turret before that teleport could even come through. Barrel's going to come up and going to be avoided completely. The Cataclysm comes on in, and Hanabi, unfortunately, this ain't it, my friend. He didn't have his cannon barrage and was just trying to find a kill, but 1v3 uh, yeah. ain't going to do it. We take I mean, those. I guess so. I mean, look, <laughs> as Hanabi is probably like, oh, I don't know if there's another ward in this brush. I don't know if I'm seeing, like, should I just back? Should I? That's the one way I can get out of this. But he decides to try to look for the traded kill. Doesn't get that either. And suddenly, you know, Fnatic had that little dip. And then they've been given a few donations here in the mid game. And the gold lead is now only 400. I mean, you talked about it was only 1,000. Now it's halved. And PSG really need to be careful about playing with their food here. Yeah. And got to tighten it up. Um, they have been able to do this, of course. And uh, it's close to 15 minutes into this game. Shirley going to be on the map very, very soon. 400 gold, still the lead if PSG. And their team fighting is still going to be very, very scary. Right? Like this composition is not to be underestimated. Fnatic have some tools themselves. So PSG, we're going to tighten this one up. Again, want to highlight Bean here. Um, being able to play as cleanly as he does. Um, very low death, especially considering the fact how Fnatic has been kind of bullied around. These continuous skirmishes. And again, from a player, basically going straight from EU Masters. But not like Adam did, where you win EU Masters and then you have like a split of LEC. But just straight to the worlds. Group stage is such a tall ask, and I, I think that now two all in the gym should be able to really exert his, press, uh, his presence in these fights as the second Herald does get picked up. Gonna be looking, as per usual, at the Drake fight that's gonna be set up in a minute 30, because with Fnatic now being not even behind anymore, I was gonna say barely, but that's not the case, and having two big spikes in those Guild Force finished, eight, uh, also is the mythic finish for Adam, who has the protobelt. Fnatic now very much in this game. Yeah. So much mobility added with these three mythics coming through. And I mean, this key gets the bottom turret, grabs those Krugs. He is starting to really get online here. And this is a really scary moment where PSG can very quickly lose control over the map and lose control of vision. Look at the deep wards there for Fnatic actually to the left of the Drake pit. They're starting to get that extra vision. And PSG have a few champions that can't just really walk through the jungle safely, especially this Misfortune, who's trying to roam a lot, trying to have big impacts, especially dealing with this pushing Trindamir, might get punished if she walks over one of those wards. Yeah. Well, here in this side lane, Niski versus Maple continues. 
But it looks like uh, the Trindamir is going to have the priority in this lane, at least for now. 2-0-0. On the mid laner for Fnatic, that Gale Force, like you were talking about, is going to be completed. Not going for the Gore Drinker build that we've seen so many times. Of course, people talking about Kraken Slayer as well, but wanting that extra mobility. Of course, Trinomir's liked the Gale Force first, um, before he sort of became cool just recently in uh, more recent patches. Trinomir players did like Gale Force when Mythic items first became a thing. Not so much, but uh, Niski still on that train. Uh, the thing for PSG here, of course, is that you you can try and force him. As I say, they're the teleport, so I guess the force, you don't have to. You have great <laughs> scaling, but they're looking to fight here, or at the very least, throw down Herald, maybe go for a push down mid. Yeah, I like this. Just uh, grab yourself some control of this mid lane, but Blippo says no. He wants to fight right now, and he's just thrown into the bouncy castle. Thankfully, he has a lantern to take. Shirley's still amongst this one as well, as Cannon Barrage was picked out. She is going to charge forward. Fnatic, though, back to the mid lane. Unable to be in position right now for this Drake that both of these teams want so much. But bro, under half health, going to be so difficult for him to engage. Doesn't have Cataclysm. Adam has teleport, and he could try to look for a flank here. He's got his ultimate available, but he's sticking with the squad for now. They're playing this so slowly, Fnatic are so safely here. And Maple's the one actually looking for the flank, as you can see. Makeshift cannon, and it's in goes Adam. He's immediately exhausted. The rest of the team, they do need to try and follow up, but it's the flash out from Kaiwing Niski looking for the low health targets. He's gonna take down Unified in the back line, and Flippo is gonna deal with Maple, who tried to do the same thing but failed. And Fnatic win a team fight and will now be able to take the Drake. And what we see there is the immediacy of Fnatic. Even though Adam doesn't actually find anyone specifically with the Slicing Maelstrom, he does even exhaust and split up the fight. And that is all the space that Niski needs, as the Guild Force, as early, already quite fed, spins on top of that backline, takes a little bit of time, Kowing tries to jump out, is actually able to do so, but then does find the kill on Unified. And now we have gone from a game where it felt like Fnatic, good early game, then PSG taking a huge lead after a misstep of Fnatic in the jungle. And now I'm starting to feel like Fnatic very clearly aware of the fact that if you get a favorable tape like that, three ultimates used by PSG in that mid lane kerfuffle that didn't actually lead to anything. And Fnatic's like, we still have four of our ultimates. Yeah, we yeah. can go. He's and got, they did, and it worked. You've got to be so careful too as Hanabi in this game now because your side laning is always going to be under threat. As watching this fight happen again, I mean, you talked about Adam uh, in this Axe replay. He just flashes in, looks for the slicing Maelstrom, and suddenly now half of the team of PSG is cut off from River and uh, Maple. So Maple can't actually really buffer, he can't actually set up for anything in this fight. And by the time that he actually gets into the thick of things, it's already over. And Fnatic now are in a position where they have so much control over the map, so much control over vision. Side laning, not really a thing that PSG could do safely anymore, especially dealing with Niski's uh, Trindamir. He can catch you off guard, he can catch you as the GP. And the big thing for me was that Hanabi used his Cannon Barrage when Bwipo engaged. And that was actually, so, it was so clear how hard it is for Fnatic to deal with. And in hindsight, that play from Bwipo was so smart because I think the goal, seemingly, was PSG just throw your ultimates. Whippo was able to get out, only invested the Cataclysm. It was both the Lee Kick, the Cannon Barrage, as well as, I think, Kaiwing's ultimate. So with all of those gone, all of a sudden, the pressure from PSG in that uh, follow-up skirmish was so much less. Now, Fnatic able to get the second Drake, able to start finishing these items. And the beauty of the uh, cannon by Adam is, yeah, you know, he's, he's behind. He's probably not going to win his sideline against the Navi, but it doesn't matter at all. We have Niski, who just finished his quick plays. We have Bean, who was building towards the second item, just finished his last Whisper. And as long as those two players can remain, um, remain on the map and try and find an opening, the moment that there is no CC available for Niski, he's going to spin on someone and he's going to yeah. die. And yeah. there, there is an exhaust Brom. Kaiwing also got two tapped, so it's not great. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the Braum had to try and get out of there, trying yeah. to save himself, and then Unified's like, uh, but aren't you supposed to stand beside me? Help me? But no, he can't do that either, because the spin is just a little bit too strong. When these cooldowns, like you were talking about, they've been tracked so well by Fnatic in that last fight, that uh, Niski's just able to do whatever the heck he wants, and that is not what he wants if you're a PSG fan, as River looks to try and get his blue buff, he's not going to get it. Fnatic are cross-mapping so well, every time Niski comes up to... When he goes to the sideline, it was bottom before, now the top side, he gets a turret, and the rest of his team goes with him. They're kind of setting up as bodyguards. If anyone tries to rotate in there, you collapse on top of them. And you're doing fine as Adam on the other lane. 
against Hanabi. You're not winning it, you're not crushing it, but you're you're going to be totally okay, especially when you have teleport up like this. If there is a fight, if they do decide to commit, you've got that teleport, you have your slicing mails from available. It, it almost just feels like map checkmate here for Fnatic. We talked about it all the way back to when this map started, but I mean, the beginning of the game, get that early Drake <laughs> control. I know this is a big meme in the LCK whenever I call a game out of LCK on that. But having that early Drake control That's nice. another Cataclysm. Whippo deep underneath two turrets. He's going to get taken down, but can Fnatic find anything more? Niski now has to use the Undying Rage. Looks to try and spin his way out, but he's on top of a cannon barrage and will be tidied up. Adam with the ultimate, but only onto Maple, who uses the best item in the game and does move himself away. Now five alive for PSG and Fnatic without their jungler or their mid laner, and it could just be a Baron for PSG. I was fine when it happened in mid lane, but there was a turret there. You can't dive that deep without the rest of your, or that deep rider without the rest of your team to follow up. And also one of the most fat members in Niski isn't here. Well, now the bullet time comes through. Hillisan gonna flash out of the way. It's now Maple coming on in for the flank, but not gonna get too much with his slicing Maelstrom that he stole away. Hillisan with the three man plays pretty good, but he's still dead. Um, Saves, possibly, uh, one of the members of Fnatic tries to stop that engagement. Well, at the end of the day, they're able to prevent the Baron here. I mean, that's what counts. Uh, I mean, sometimes you have to make rough choices. You have to take these awkward fights to prevent that from happening. Could have been uh, a little bit cleaner here, but at least they're able to stop PSG from getting that critical Baron. And Hillisong is able to help his teammates escape there, because I don't think that's a fight you really wanted to commit into further, despite those low health bars. It's probably fine because now uh, it's actually Fnatic has tempo on the Baron, right? Like the uh, multiple members of PHG actually have to back up the back of that. I, like I said, fine with it last time. This time you're diving two screens deep uh, <laughs> while there is a turret. Uh, so immediately we see the um, exhaust the barrage so comes through, we see the barrage. And yeah, then also Niski is in a very unfortunate situation, but there's no one to help him. And he does a lot of damage, but if everyone just kites him and or is too tanky, don't really get a lot done. I do really like Fnatic's attempt that we don't get to see here now, um, or rather successful attempt at uh, taking the bonus. That's yes. gonna get flashed on and Mate. killed. Hey, um, I said it earlier, suddenly Trindamir appears. <laughs> <laughs> and your side lane is Hanabi. You die. You can't deal with that at all. You, you've got no escape. You've got no way to get out of there. And this is a fed Trindamir who's now got the quick blades, as was mentioned earlier. Very easy to actually just come in there and say, nope, you're not allowed to do this. It's illegal, as uh, Chronicle would call it. And <laughs> no, 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 that's Kader. That's I, Kader. I, I, I you, you, used it. It, you used it a little bit here in the LCK, I right? did. I did, but credit where credit is due. Sure, sure, sure. I thought uh, that was you. I didn't know. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, he did use that's, it. So that's actually, that's you know, not, it's fine. Yeah, if if, if, if Kader is willing to share, we'll have to ask him. <laughs> um, let us know, Kader, We, we don't have enough memes in the LCK yet. We need more. <laughs> yeah, really? Just, see, that's why I tried to attribute it to you. I'm trying to, I'm trying to buff you here. <laughs> uh, we have, we have like an encyclopedia <laughs> of memes. We do. <laughs> it has its own page. Um, and now with the soul point going over to Fnatic, uh, I do actually think that they're in a very favorable position. Obviously, overforce, not necessary, but it doesn't actually lead to an objective, which has been a recurring theme today, where as long as you don't lose the Baron, the soul point, or the actual soul, giving up a kill left and right in the current state of the game isn't gonna be the end of the world. So as long as Fnatic stays cool, and I know that for Fnatic specifically sometimes, that can be hard, but for the next four minutes, set up nicely with the pressure that you have in your side lane with an unkillable Trindamir, you should be in a fine position to get Soul and be in a primo position to get that first win. Whoa, in goes River, goes very, very far, following the flagging and dragging uh, Jarvan, but he is going to be kicked into a bullet time, but he's pretty tanky, so he's going to survive that one, but he does have to use the flash. So no more flash cataclysms to come through is now Niski on a potential flank position right now if PSG wanted to challenge for the chickens, but they do decide not to. Adam has teleport as well, but there's no great ward to get onto here to try to collapse there. And this ended up being a pretty safe exchange for PSG at the end of the day. Uh, the problem is that Adam is still side laning freely. Someone's going to have to deal with that. And yet again, Fnatic just rinse and repeat. You're going to clear that Baron vision off. You've got the better range with this Jin pick, and you can just sit back and wait for them to come to you. And if they do overcommit, and you have that ward this time, because you finally get that deep vision, as you can see here, they're starting to clear up, then you can get that really awesome flanking cannon through. Yeah, and uh, you can see the island of uh, PSG gold lead that happened between 10 minutes and 15 minutes is going to be immediately into the ocean of Fnatic, uh, which is what I saw in the picture that was the gold graph. Can't help but seeing How it are you doing, every time. I um, like the island. It's I getting never a little, about it that a little way. bit late. Yeah. Um, and it, it does kind of show, uh, honestly, we've talked about Fnatic being a little bit volatile sometimes, but uh, PSG have also 
Had some rough early games. RNG comes to mind, and now the trap being set again. We've seen this one before. There's a lot of PSG members around here, but Niski is still very, very scary. Adam's going to teleport in. There's the slicing Maelstrom. The stand beside me comes on forward. Kylie staying alive. The exhaust comes in, and both of them are dead. And PSG, after tidying up both of the solo laners, are thinking about grabbing some more control around this Baron. This is not what I had in mind when I was talking about the teleport and coming in here from Adam to look for the big ultimate there, because they don't have enough follow-up damage. You hit the slicing Maelstrom, but you're not able to kill anybody. And this is just too little too late here. Well, now Maple looking for more. Quiffo's going to get himself out with the help of Hillisong, no. And there's another bullet time to come through. The flash forward from Maple. He doesn't want to give this one up just yet. Still has the Undying Rage. Fnatic have backed away successfully. Very deadly flourish there from Bane, but no follow-up really. How far is low? And with PSG investing this much in an attempt to chase down Fnatic, it, it's going to be another scenario. Yeah, cool. You got the kill. You killed Niski and Adam, but now you're not able to get anything out of it. Instead of trying to reach for the Baron when the 50-50 is still there, when the flip is available, because they do actually read this play really nicely. Right? You have the Guardian Gorm standing at the ready to make sure Hanabi is safe. Adam immediately gets exhausted like happened last time, but then I get that it's tempting to go for this Baron, but like there is a lot of range still available. Bwipo is full health, so even in the best case scenario where you do actually get the Baron down, it might be a 50-50, then they chase really far through the jungle. And I think that the most important objective in this fight is not that Baron, it's the Drake that's spawning yeah. Yeah. in the next minute. That, that, my, my biggest issue with that play is that there's a clear disconnect between Bean and Hillisong and the rest of the team that's going in. They're looking to set up for Baron, you're going all in on this fight that looks like a 3v4 at best for Fnatic, and now you also lost your teleport on your cannon, which is one of the best ways oh. you can objective fight. Now this is sneaky. Yeah, we're just doing Baron. Here is Fnatic trying to two-man it. Of course, Trindamir and the Jarvan can certainly do so, putting the flag down to help everyone out as well. It's down to half health. PSG have no idea. This is gone. And and they can even contest. Oh, yeah, and Drake's not even up. up. And they might be able to sacrifice Adam, but to get a Baron for this, you'll take that any day of the week. The Flash comes in, there's the Dash Cannon as well. He stuns them up. Cannon Barrage comes on down, and yes, they managed to take the, uh, the the Purple Ninja in the bottom lane. However, the Purple Worm dies in the Baron Pit, and now P Fnatic just... I don't understand this game, but I love it from Fnatic. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. If your team is sneaking a two-man Baron, you don't have to shove in the bot wave. Like, you can you can take it a little bit slower. Adam uh, investing a lot and actually getting taken down, but Fnatic, he was baiting. It's totally <laughs> I, fine. I, I don't think they knew I was. Well, I mean, I'm look, trying to get on the level of this, of the, I'm, and of I this game. I don't think I'm there. Yeah, the 40 chess, I'm trying to catch up. They will get the Drake as well. They're able to get Adam's Flash, and we'll see how big this Red Bull power, Baron power play ends up being here because you know, you've, you've lost your cannon yet again. You still have, obviously, extremely powerful side laning with this Trindamir pick, but you're not in a position right now to safely utilize it. So, in a lot of ways, you get the Baron, and that comes with a lot of gold, that comes with a little bit of map control and extra presence. But if you can't use it for major objectives as PSG, you still feel like there's a chance you can hold on here, look for better fights later. This is definitely not a massive Baron by any means because of that bottom pick and that, the control that came with it. Yeah. I just like how ahead of the play Fnatic were, though, knowing that PSG had to stop them from getting the soul, and then using that, which we've talked about, you know, put, make sure that your opponent isn't able to make the decision. PSG had to go to the Drake, and therefore Fnatic capitalized by just giving it up. Don't lose too much from that. It's just a singular ocean. Really beautifully done here from Fnatic, but they still have to close out this game. It's not, there's 1.4K, I'm saying close out the game. They have to utilize the Baron to get themselves a lead that is going to be able to allow them to win as the uh, cute little shot onto the turret and then uh, Lantern Ride to safety for Bean. Because there's been a lot of gangplanks that have gone for, you know, these, these builds that they're kind of beefy. Yes. Divine Song, the respect, not Hanabi. He has a full crit build on oh, the gangplank, yeah. and that is no matter what you do as Fnatic, you need to remain in full awareness of one, where uh, where he is, and secondly, like, where are the barrels? Yeah. Because if a barrel hits now on someone like Bean, who's been playing very clean the old game, has been playing very risk averse, which I think is really good, you know, provide the stability, the back of the Jin uh, can really give a team, you cannot hit, get hit by one, because the Infinity yet is dead. This time, the character in question actually does have 60% crit, so it works. <laughs> uh, and that does mean that if Hanabi now finds another of those Fnatic plays where they overextend, you get eat, you eat like one or two barrels and a cannon barrage, you can still get blown up. And that's why I think that 
Fnatic, they have a lead, but it's more due to the fact the pressure that they have from yeah. this Ocean Drake. Well, the other issue that they have is that they have, obviously, a really strong front lane. They have a Trinomir that can side lane. They have a Cannon that can side lane, but they don't have a really strong pushing mage. They don't have amazing siege in terms of pushing these waves through. They obviously have a lot of range in this gen pick, but the consistent damage in these fights is very much short burst. You've got to have that Cannon Ultimate coming through once the Undying Rage is done. If Bean didn't kill somebody, if they're not actually getting extremely low, you don't win the follow-up fight because they have way more consistent damage than you do in that extended exchange with the Gangplank, the Silas that can then engage on to use the Undying Rage second. So it's very difficult to end the game with a Baron like that, to even get inhibitor turret damage with a Baron like that. We've already lost your Cannon. You didn't have map control. Yeah, I agree. I think it's actually really interesting. Both teams, if left alone with turrets, like this game will just be over because they tear through them. I mean, you look at Hanabi, you've spoken about his items already. Like, he gets some free time with the turret. Th those things just die, right? So it's gone. Already, like, at 32 minutes into this game, this could end extremely quickly after an ace team fight for both teams or, because both of them have so much 80 damage. Yeah. Or we go to 70 minutes because neither team Ooh, wants to lose. I've seen Silas's in 74 minute games this year. I right. like it. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm, I'm ready. I'm not ready to stop I casting. Don't, I don't think the rest of the world is. <laughs> <laughs> I think my LCK fans, you know, they remember the game in question. It was T1 versus Nongshim. It shouldn't have taken 70 minutes. That's not a thing that should be allowed in the but game should anymore. Because Jinnah, SKT have taken 92 minutes. That's why, I, 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 that's why Elder was invented. You know, mm. and then, then we found a way to also ignore that. I don't think either of these teams are going to. Elder is going to spawn at the very latest. Um, in 10 minutes, right, when we do get possibly to the, uh, or past rather, the full seven uh, Drake mark that is possible within a game. But that is provided that neither of these teams see an opportunity for the trigger. Based on the gameplay we've seen thus far, I'm pretty sure that either of them is going to identify an angle, regardless of whether it's one you should take. I and mean, then go all in 50 seconds to the next Drake. Right now, I mean, Fnatic has positional advantage here. They've got two side laners pushing. And right now, Adam has teleport. Obviously, Niski does not, but he's fairly nearby. He's rotating up. This is where PSG is going to have to come to Fnatic because this is the soul for Fnatic. This is not Fnatic ignoring a third Drake. This is actually the important one, the one that you have to stop as PSG. So we're going to have to see a rotation in. Fnatic, the timing of this is so thin. 20 seconds, the advantage, right, or rather the timer with the advantage they have, but PSG have now grouped up. Yeah, they did their homework, though. Top side of the map is... Uh dealt with by Adam, and now he's made his way back to the rest of the team. PSG now just trying to tidy up the mid lane. It's great hook onto River from Hillsong, but they're not going to engage. Niski spotted out off to the side, checking their flanks. This Bean finds a deadly flourish. No Q from River. Adam's hook got flash. again. He's a magnetized. There it is. As there he goes, Adam finds the stuns. The slashing of Maelstrom is just beautiful as Pwimpo puts them into the Cataclysm as well. It's a good kick from River, and they haven't quite got the kills. It's a double from Hanabi. Remember the amount of damage these barrels raining through as Pwimpo's still got a smite, I guess, looking to see whether they can steal this one away. He gets on in, not going to be secured. It's Hanabi that takes down the dragon of all people, and Fnatic is right running away, Niski as well. This is where it gets scary. I mean, you talked about that pushing power with these two teams, the burst damage is there. And unfortunately for Fnatic, even though they have great engage, they've got Niski can go into the front line there. You've got Adam with a flash over the wall into that slicing Maelstrom. The damage from being on this Jin is just too slow. They can't finish off those targets. The other side has a Silas, they have a Braum. They can live through that initial burst and then actually win that longer fight with those barrels and the gangplank damage coming through. And while I love the angle that Fnatic tried to go for, you also saw how ready PSG were, right? Like. They knew that Adam was waiting there, and they were so ready. Like, we're going to get a replay of that fight, I'm sure. And in that, you should see how immediate the response from everyone on PSG is. And then the rest of Fnatic can't really get quite as deep immediately. Also, an insane kick coming through from River. It was who, really, really yeah, no, good. Look, look at this. So they are s clearly suspecting that there is going to be a play coming in here, right? And then Fnatic immediately, the flashes come through, but the follow-up damage isn't really there. Maple zones him away, and then look at this kick. Three-man knock-up. Niski doesn't get to do nearly as much damage as he would want to with uh, how fed he currently is. And it's the game prank.
It's, it's multiple damage dealers insane. for PSG, and there's really only one here outside of the initial engage and the cannon going through is always going to be burst down, always going to be exhausted on the side of Fnatic. I mean, it's really hard to win these longer engages because of that, these longer fights, rather, I should say. And, I mean, the whole map has opened up now for PSG. They've got the Baron, they've got extreme pushing power, and this might just be Fnatic on their last legs. Yeah, it's crazy because Fnatic did have so much control. There is still only 1.5k in this. This it's is nothing. still very, very close. And Fnatic are able to tidy up these minion waves, and try and stop PSG from pushing. But Maple on the bottom side, un unanswered for now. Yeah, if unanswered for even a few seconds, these structures just disappear. Yeah, Hanabi in that mid lane. He just needs one auto, decides he doesn't want to. It's not even worth his time, Wolf. <laughs> As the inner turret does fall. Now it is going to be just the uh, Fnatic jungle that will be eradicated of everything. Now Niski going to push back towards that bottom side of the map, closer to 40 minutes into this game. I believe the longest game um, so far at Worlds was uh, Genji versus Matt, I believe. 45 minutes, something like that. I wasn't going to mention Genji no, in this I, game. I, I said Genji <laughs> without even thinking. I, I was just trying to I, like, it's obviously Genji that has to be in the longest. Oh, no, I, I've done it now. Where I'm teasing Genji, and they haven't even played in the first one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Should it's, not be doing you that. Know, we, only we can do this, just to be clear. You know, they're our team. We love them very dearly. I mean, everyone else can do it. As no, if anyone else talks smack, <laughs> I would be very I'm upset. Are Ryan. you getting protective of the team you've been teasing? I and, like it. Um, the, the key thing for Fnatic here is, and I'm sure that after this fight, they will identify, as long as you kill Hanab, you can win a team fight. Right, like uh, with how far behind Unified here, yeah, we're deep into the game. You still can't eat a massive bullet time, but especially this lethality build, I don't think is going to be as threatening, especially with how far behind the curve he is. And then Maple has actually been able to pick up quite a few kills. He's going to finish his death cap soon as well, so he has to be dealt with, but it's very bursty. Whereas Hanabi basically has enough DPS to just win against everyone on Fnatic. If you can't find the gangplank, it's not enough, but Ooh, go great to Maple. Hook. As Maple is going to put down the Undying Rage, gets himself out of the way. But that means that that ultimate unavailable for the next little while. That's big. He's got to be so careful about these types of exchanges here as Maple. You don't want to be throwing that away. That Hydrac Jack is so massive, you can't use that ultimate anymore. That's one of the best ways for Silas to buy enough time for those damage dealers, right? The Gangplank and the MF to actually do that damage in those longer fights. And, and really fighting over basically nothing to actually commit that is so unfortunate. Also lost control of the top side of the map during this as well. So PSG, I mean, it doesn't feel like they just had a Baron buff. Well, now, I mean, Maple can't steal away the ult. It's Niski, the Undying Rage. Oh my goodness, thankfully he does have a little bit more of it. Level 18, of course, so it does last for a while. Is now Fnatic able to run their way out. Hellsang's positioning, I loved that. Being able to get there, grab that hook so that they could get themselves that advantage. I like the idea behind the play. Unfortunately, not able to break open the base with it. And what's important here is a couple of ultimates have been used. There will be no Cannon Barrage for this Drake. There will be no Dragon's Rage for this Drake. Hanabi doesn't have the Teleport available either. So Fnatic, while not being able to actually get anything in terms of structures, in terms of kills, has still made this upcoming fight a lot easier for themselves. And if they can win here, the game is still very much within their grasp. They've got to kill somebody early in this fight. It needs to be either Unified or Hanabi, or both, ideally. Oh, this could be the pickle. The but Adam it. just destroys the Silas! His ultimate was better as the hook is going to connect from Hillisong as well. But he does take a lot of damage there as Unified throws down a defensive bullet time. But this will be the Ocean Soul for Fnatic. And Adam, the young gentleman of the top lane, just obliterating one of the oldest veterans of League of Legends in its entirety in and, Maple. I mean, we talked about the, the tool being down, has is able to steal that ultimate away, but can't use it. And I mean, you end up dying here in a straight up side 1v1 before the fight actually happens. We don't even get to discuss how the longer fight Face goes. check, hook is easy there from Hillisang as well. And Kaiwing has to do this. He has to try and get some vision. As in goes Niski, maybe didn't want to be doing that necessarily, but there is, oh dear, a turret shot in the sky and the Undying Rage is going to wear off. So uh, they're going to trade mid laners in the end. And this is important to remember. Yes, Ocean Soul, very, very good, but we have seen teams lose with it. There is so much damage in the game available right now. If you look at this composition from BSD as well, where they're going to blow you up in seconds, and then that health region doesn't matter oh, with Maple. Oh, no, Maple. Out of the death chamber, maybe back in there as he's looking to try and just 
last for as long They're as possible. Top. Bean wants this. The flash comes through. There's the curtain call. One of these boards probably needs to connect, but not really, as the Cataclysm is going to close the gap, and Bean is going to connect it. And now <sighs> PSG lose their mid laner again. They push top here. The Baron's spawn timer is perfect for this. Wait. It's going to be a cross-map rotation over. I mean, there's just enough time here for Fnatic. If they rush right over to have this, they have flash for Adam, so you can flash slicing Maelstrom into this. They need to rush over now, though. Yeah. A little bit slow on the realization. The so Baron's late. down to 3,000. Okay, so they do have the vision available as Adam ults and then his team probably tells him to back away i would assume that's why he sort of drive by slice mouse from there. this is a game of league of legends that has been very <laughs> back and forth okay there's a lot going on there's some missteps on both sides you can tell the tensions are high right? i will have no adam slander he got them the ocean soul okay you no know, no he, I, I, he was... I actually i think that the the rest of the team is like no 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 adam don't we're fine. Don't do it. Not another We're solo okay. laner. I mean, We're it's, okay. the, I mean We're you okay. can see. I mean, we can see everything, right? The, yeah, the fans yeah, can yeah. see everything, and this is a moment where it's like, oh god, how, how low is the Baron? Like, can we can we fight this? I want to get that speed up on the slice of Maelstrom. Maybe we can turn this. So you get desperate, but that tool is not going to be available now for the defense. Still have half the cooldown available, though. It comes up very very quickly. We're very deep into the game, but if PSG can push before that is available, the Maelstrom is such a big team fight moment. Anabi is just nursing his barrels right now, waiting for that opportunity waiting for Fnatic to step too far forward. Does have his cannon barrage. All of the cooldowns that PSG want are up and available. Naples about to have his oh, teleport no, there, there it is. That was the pick that they were looking for. And Hillisang, unfortunately, walks into the trap. This is going to be a free inhibitor. Niski had canceled his back as well. He was trying to continue pushing, but Maple, like you say, was back. PSG, they're not wanting to stop this. Tarnaby, these barrels are just so scary. Teleport coming That's through from Maple. See whether PSG can continue to do this. The Nexus Tower is taking so much damage. Slicing Maelstrom is almost up. Yep, the hijack on the Undying Rage as well as Adam. Gonna fake this one out, but Whiffo now just gonna flash away. Does have the Cataclysm available. River now looking for his opportunity on to be There's the flash forward. Adam doesn't get exhausted. He's going to cut through the Braum, but I think the PSG can still fight with this one. Cannon Barrage now on cooldown. Not actually hitting any of the members of Fnatic. As the curtain call comes on in. Not going to get too much joy here as Fnatic should be able to hold on to this one as Adam underneath the relative safety of his inhibitor turret. They and PSG have pushed away. I mean, look, they got value out of redemption on this hold. They dropped the redemption down. That buys just enough time. Adam goes in. He's got the flash. Maelstrom gets a pick there. And somehow, some way, even without those flourishes connecting from Bean, they're able to pull this off. This game continues. Fnatic is not letting this one go. Oh, EU no. hasn't won yet today. <laughs> and they're going to get it, even if it's the last thing they do. That barrel by Hanabi actually insane you see exactly the threat that this character provides now has six items sold his boots so yeah the, you you can't get near the barrels at all and starting to feel to me like i said 10 minutes ago <laughs> elder is about to spawn it's gonna happen it's gonna be an elder fit surely at this point in the game i mean it starts to feel that way the question is can psg start to control the map because they will have this inhibitor powering through mid and they could deal with the side laners here if they collapse quickly adam flashless right now because he had to use that to defend that's not going to be up in time for this elder fight is slicing maelstrom will he will have teleport but he's not going to have a teleport ward because they lost full control of this bottom side of the map so yes but stay alive but in terms of how this next fight goes it is going to be definitely way harder for them to steal this elder away psg have all the advantages yeah they can set up for it most definitely but the fact that Fnatic have kept one nexus turret alive you it's know it's, it's mid lane oh. they're going to be in mid lane anyway right and Fnatic are now pushing forward whoever wins a team fight if there's ever an ace the game's there, over it doesn't matter who it is there's also that a takes this ward in the base and i don't know if hanabi can oh. take on a turret by himself through the back door uh, resistances that the turret gets but what if he does he has a lot of items river now river okay he's now gonna look for the kick does find it on the beat here gale forces to get himself out of the way cannon barrage not exactly finding the value that they want is hillisan gonna flash out gets that hook back in as well Quippo decides that he just wants to dive straight on top of psg maple looks for the back line as well there's the slicing maelstrom the cc is beautiful and maple is thrown around like a ragdoll but he keeps himself alive 
One versus four, that was ridiculous. And PSG, they can see that one last Nexus turret and they're pushing for it. Trin the mirror is so broken that even when the enemy team doesn't have it, they utilize the ultimate there. Maple single-handedly takes down multiple people and this might be it here. Yeah, and it looks like it was is. trying to do it. He was trying so hard, man, but Fnatic, they cross the map, they see an opportunity, they thought they could take the fight to PSG, but they fall flat in the end. There is so much damage, and this Nexus is not going to stand a chance. It was so heartfelt from Fnatic. But PSG will go up to 2-1 and one in the group. One of our closest and longest games here in Worlds, but this is the mental crusher. This is the one that hurts. You had a lead in your first game, you lost it. You know, we had great jungle pathing here. You're playing with a sub, you lose that second game, but you lose this third game. You go 0-3 in the groups, feels terrible, but you lose this long, grueling 45-minute game where many times you had such a lead, you had such an edge, but you just couldn't close it out in the end. That is what's really gonna hurt for Fnatic fans and for this team going forward. And for PSG, if you had any doubts about the PCS after MSI, you were like, oh, beyond, they didn't look that good in planes. PSG themselves make it very clear, we are here to stay a steel mental and an incredible performance from six item full damage Hanabi on the gangplank. Yep, and I think we can all remember some of the Hanabi gangplank